Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Have you ever left the gym feeling accomplished only to have a blistering, two-sided headache slam you minutes later, forcing you to squat on the asphalt with your eyelids clenched and wonder what just happened to your body? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and with me is Alara Skye. Today we're dissecting why these exertion headaches occur, how they differ from ordinary tension pain, and what evidence-backed adjustments allow you to keep moving without fearing the next pulse of pain. I'm glad to guide the discussion, Ethan. We'll stick strictly to findings in Dr. Mercola's article, focusing on heat management in your brain, pressure spikes inside your skull, and the specific warning signs that mean you should seek medical evaluation before the next set of burpees. Let's begin with the spark itself. During vigorous movement, your brain generates heat, yet can't sweat or vent it directly. To cool down, it reroutes extra blood upward, raising intracranial pressure. If that increase happens faster than your vessels can adapt, pain receptors fire, and you feel a sharp, pulsing ache on both sides. Hydration helps your cardiovascular system work efficiently, but the article makes clear it isn't the root trigger. Even perfectly hydrated athletes can suffer because the primary driver is that rapid, heat-related surge of blood to your head, particularly when workout intensity jumps without a runway. Conditioning plays a decisive role. People new to strenuous exercise, or those returning after a long, sedentary stretch, have vessels that haven't practiced controlled dilation and contraction. Consistent, gradual training progressively retrains those vessels to handle surges with less pressure buildup. The encouraging news is that many sufferers notice headaches fade after two or three months of steady progress. Your vessel walls become more elastic. Your cardiovascular system learns to fine-tune pressure on the fly, and the hill sprint that once wrecked you soon feels routine. Listeners often assume a headache proves they failed to drink enough. Yet the data show pain still appears in people who meet or exceed their fluid targets. Drinking is necessary, but not sufficient protection, because the real battle happens inside a space that cannot expand your skull. Exactly. Dehydration narrows blood volume, making your heart pump harder, which encourages even more vessel dilation in your brain. That overcompensation layers extra pressure on an already tight system. So staying hydrated reduces strain, but can't solve a heat management problem by itself. Environment matters too. Training in direct sun, a poorly ventilated studio, or with heavy dark clothing, holds in heat like a blanket. The hotter you become, the more aggressively your brain pulls blood upstairs to cool itself, and the pressure spikes follow almost predictably. Altitude magnifies the challenge. In thinner air, you receive less oxygen per breath, so your brain increases blood flow again for cooling and oxygen delivery. If you visit mountains and attack high-intensity intervals on day one, a skull-rattling headache is likely. The article also lists red flag symptoms demanding prompt evaluation. Vision disturbances, blind spots, nausea, confusion, fainting, thunderclap-style onset, a stiff neck, or pain that refuses to ease after 48 hours. These signs can indicate vascular spasms, hemorrhage, or infection, issues no ice pack can fix. Most exercise headaches, however, remain benign. They feel frightening but fade within minutes to two days, and risk drops steadily as conditioning improves. Tracking your own triggers helps you intervene early rather than abandon exercise altogether. Prevention starts with a warm-up. Five to ten minutes of light movement, brisk walking, dynamic stretches, gentle cycling, lets vessels in muscle and brain tissue dilate gradually. That staged expansion curbs the abrupt pressure jump that lights up pain receptors the moment your heart rate spikes. Hydration strategy comes next. Don't rely on thirst cues alone. Thirst often lags behind need. Sip fluid steadily throughout the day. Aim for pale yellow urine, and after sweat-soaked sessions, replenish electrolytes with coconut water or a homemade blend of filtered water, sea salt, and a splash of fruit juice. Control temperature whenever possible. Choose breathable fabrics, light colors, and train away from peak heat. Indoors, Position yourself where airflow is strongest or lower thermostat settings. Remember, your skin can sweat, but your brain cannot. External cooling is your most powerful tool. If you travel to high altitude, 
Give yourself at least 48 hours of lower intensity activity. Think walking trails, restorative yoga, or light body weight drills before sprint intervals or heavy lifting. That acclimation period lets your vascular system adjust to reduced oxygen and prevents an overzealous blood flow response. Headaches are often described as the worst headache of my life, yet they usually resolve once your cardiovascular system adapts. Staying consistent, listening to early discomfort, and avoiding rapid jumps in effort form the core of long-term prevention. Duration varies widely. Some headaches last only a few minutes. Others linger for two full days. Monitoring how long pain persists after different workouts helps you refine warm-up, hydration, and pacing strategies based on real feedback. Gradual progression is key. Instead of doubling mileage or weight overnight, add small, steady increments each week. This measured climb teaches vessels to respond smoothly rather than explosively, matching the article's emphasis on building fitness levels step by step. Clothing choices deserve attention. Swap thick cotton tees for breathable fabrics and avoid heavy or dark colors that trap heat. Small wardrobe tweaks reduce the cooling burden on your brain and align with the article's advice on minimizing heat overload. The Cleveland Clinic notes that exertion headaches feel like a rapid, pounding pulse in contrast with the dull tightness of tension pain. Recognizing that difference will help you describe symptoms accurately if you need professional evaluation. Risk rises in anyone who ramps up workouts too fast, exercises in extreme temperatures, trains at altitude without acclimating, or wears gear that traps heat. Proper progression, environment management, and sensible hydration each cut that risk dramatically. Let's consolidate. Exercise headaches arise when your brain overheats and boosts blood flow, spiking pressure. Hydration, gradual conditioning, cool environments, and mindful pacing all chip away at that surge. Ignore sudden, severe, or lingering pain, and you could overlook a critical warning. Your practical challenge. Over the next seven days, audit three things. Your warm-up duration, your total fluid intake, and the temperature or airflow quality of your workout space. Make at least one measurable improvement in each category, and see whether post-exercise head pain lessens, shortens, or disappears. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.